Hi. What's up? <laughs> Welcome everybody. Class is in session. I hope you're ready to focus, listen and write notes. Where's your notebook? This is not your notebook. Where's your notebook? Manu's teaching. <laughs> but you didn't see Guys, that. let me tell you something. <laughs> Guys, so today's topic is on self-care for artists. I'm the one leading this discussion or shouldn't I believe I should be the one leading this discussion because I kind of feel like my dear lovely partner doesn't, doesn't know as much about self-care as he but should. My point is, so we were having this debate earlier. My point is it's self-care for a reason. So what works for my self-care isn't necessarily what works for your self-care. I'm not saying self I'm not saying that you don't participate in actions of self-care. So what I'm just saying they're not only? enough to be because it's according to your perspective. Anyway, guys, I am the teacher of this lesson today. Today I'm teaching you on self-care. Olango wants to take control of this conversation. I don't take control. Believes, I don't take control. Said, I'm the teacher. I, I'm the teacher. And you are the teacher too. I am Nobody is teacher. more teacher than the other. <laughs> I kind of think in this case, I kind of, kind of, um, it's okay. but anyway, you know what? For, maybe, for the sake of my self-care, I will not argue with you. Maybe I don't know other activities that self-care that you do for yourself. So, you know what? I'm going to be I'm going to be open-minded. Blank slate. Yes, you just tell me. You know what they you say do about students. What they say about students? How they become better than the teachers. Focus in class, eh? <laughs> this is a very serious teacher. <laughs> if you're getting into this class with the idea that you're here to be better than me as the teacher, mm. then We've already started from the wrong foot. No, actually, the thing is, if I'm the teacher, I'm looking forward for you to be better than me in <laughs> self-care. That's what I meant. But, I mean, I'm not here to teach. Again, I'm just focusing on my self-care. And I'm here to learn <laughs> from the self-care maestro. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, you know what? Yeah, you look like the good guy. Change. Now. Change. I look like the bad guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Akuna mse atakusaidia ukijisaidia utakukazia isi mshuto mimi nasafisha hewa ongeza So guys intended to be that All right dear faithful and wonderful student today I am going to teach you dear wonderful student who thinks he knows everything what self care is what it entails for an artist and I would love to hear your thoughts on how do you take care of yourself? What are your self-care moments? How do they look like? Um, and where do you think you can improve? <laughs> okay, I'm joking. You might be really good at it. Let's find out. <clears throat> so, self-care. <laughs> if you have a question, lift your hand up. <laughs> okay. So, according to this website that I'm reading from on this book, the website is called Good RX Health. Self-care. It's a term that describes doing activities that support your physical and mental health. And they help to decrease your stress levels, they enhance your energy, and improve your overall um, quality of life. I paraphrased because I feel like the paragraph is a little long. But yes, so self-care are just simply activities that you take for yourself for to just enhance your well-being, to improve your quality of life, to um, make you happy, improve your mental health, your physical health, your relationships. It is just things that you do to make you happy. Mm. And they're not, most of these things are not um, tied to money or other things. They're, they're just for you, basically. So, for self. For self. Hence the word self-care. So let's get into a discussion today. Uh, what do you do for self care? What do I do for self care? Yeah. Um, I do a lot for self care. Why are you <laughs> smiling at this? If you believe in yourself and you're confident. That's why I'm smiling. Because I believe in myself and I'm confident. Okay. Okay, so one of the things I know I intentionally um, do, especially, okay, so there's different ways to do 
I guess self care. There's mm-hmm. you know things that you can do every hour. There's things you can do every day. There's things you can do every once other in day. A month, once, once in a month, once in a month, yeah, you know. So for me, um, I'll start with the smallest chunks. I think every other hour. I won't say every hour, but every other hour, I try to just focus on being present. Um, and by that I mean, I know there's a time back I've done like a video on my social media about a day I woke up feeling anxious and I remember like one of the things that many people commented on was, you know, um, I usually like try and listen to sounds around or I try and, you know, basically present, try yeah. and be in the moment and actually realize that whatever it is that will be causing you whatever form of anxiety is actually insignificant at that at this present moment so with every every other hour mm-hmm. in a day i usually just like soak in and you know either walk outside and you know listen to the birds um listen to sounds even outside the birds like okay cool can i hear most likely there's do these because um these the, the loud do these are motorbikes um, yes Cycles. motorcycles so yeah where we probably, live we can we can hear and do this from the road or so. even just cars yeah, or people or, or people children or children or... um so every other hour i usually like intentionally do that sometimes i try and do you know like sense like sense of smell mm. but i'm not particularly strong at that yet so what is it that you do exactly? Like explain it to us as if you are here right now and you're going to do it. And you're going to do it. Okay, so I close my eyes and I list down five sounds I can hear. Like right now, I can hear a car, I can hear birds. I can hear the fun of the computer. I can hear sheep. Shit. Yeah. Oh no, it was a car, not sheep. And from a day, I can hear the wind. Mm. So such, such. Uh, by wind, I actually meant because I could hear the rustling of the, the leaves, rustling of the leaves. Basically. Yeah. So. In that short I, moment. In that short felt moment, so present, yeah. We that, felt. Yeah, in that short moment, like. It basically allows me to just okay. You know, I'm, I'm let ready go to, of the future, mm, let go of the past, and, and just be here. Be. And most times, I find that actually, then if I was say in a heavy mind workload or workspace, when I come back to it, I'm actually much better. I actually do that as well in conversations. If I find that I'm in conversation with someone, and but isn't that equivalent to spacing out? Have it actually been? isn't. It isn't because okay. So here's the thing. Mm-hmm. You can be so carried away in a conversation, right? And start to think and project, which is mm-hmm. fair What you enough, think the other yeah. person is saying or feeling or whatever. And not even that, not well, that, but also like start to, if say we're talking about wellness, okay. right? And mm-hmm. I'm not necessarily, by project, you know, people use project only in one word, in one, um, most times in one, like, uh, perspective but mm-hmm. by project I mean okay actually projecting you know projecting the future and not projecting your perspective oh you get so I mean there's that too but so you're in a conversation with somebody but you're thinking about that thing that we're talking about or that thing that that person is talking about and I can be so immersed in thinking about what that person is talking about that I may not have the most suitable response or solution if say for example somebody is having a problem and has called me to solve a problem mm-hmm. and if they're talking about their problem maybe passionately or not i could human start, nature i could start, start thinking, thinking about, about the problem, problem and then you kind of like you kind of phase out, you yeah. phase out a bit. so in the in the space of as they're talking about the problem mm. Is okay, cool. You saw how fast it is. Like literally, even as we're speaking right now, I've just listened to a bird that has made me or brought me back present. It doesn't have to be five things. I just used mm-hmm. I just used five things for the sake of 
um, the showcase or for the sake of that presentation, but like that momentary and present. Mm -hmm. Okay, just remind yourself you're present. Then I'm actually able to sort of unplug from thinking about that thing. That thing I think also this this is because you are more of a thinker as mm -hmm. well, right? Mm -hmm. Your mind. I guess overthinkers or you know like most introverts also have that sense of like there's a lot of thoughts that just kind of come in and out of your mind mm. and so it's very easy to yeah I, I see what you mean it's very easy in a conversation to, to sort of like yeah miss the point <laughs> you know and actually yeah and not miss the point by intentionally missing the point by missing the point but by intentionally not being pre but unintentionally not being present I see. This reminds me of those times when we talk. There's a lot of times that we're talking and I kind of feel like you're not listening to me. You're like looking someplace else or looking like you're thinking about something. But then usually if I ask you, like, are you listening? You'll say, yes, I'm listening. And then you'll say what I just said. But I usually don't quite feel like you are listening. Yeah, I think another thing actually, and I guess this is one of like another trait is... Yeah. Okay, so there's times I can be still, and maybe that's why the pr present moment thing is super important for me. But there's times I can be still, but then sometimes I also feel like I flourish in chaos. Yeah, I see that. So then that means like I could be listening to what you're, and intentionally, I'm actually very attentively listening, but I feel like I need to tap my, your or whatever, or, you know. Sometimes, Our but that's not, yeah, and that's yeah. not a, that's not an every moment kind of situation, but yeah, so there's that too. Um, so yeah, that's one of the things that's I do things every other mm -hmm. hour, mm -hmm. um, and every day. Mm -hmm. Another thing I actually do is, and this I guess is a habit I picked up recently, is I intentionally leave a chunk of about an hour mm -hmm. to sort of like audio books mm -hmm. so um or podcasts or whatever that are just actually intentionally okay cool i want to grow this muscle or i want to know about this thing or i want to so i intentionally every single day actually put out at least one hour to sort of consume Content in whatever form, whether it's reading. Is this or every single day? Every single day. Actually, every single day. Every single day. Okay. Every single day, like the moments that you find me in studio, mm -hmm. randomly listening to a YouTube video or running, uh, running, running. Yeah, I see that to... though. I kind of do that a lot too, honestly. It yeah. kind of gives you. There's a thing about watching really positive content or. Uh, someone who's your favorite and they give you such good sounding good sounding sound advice. Advice or sound good, <laughs> good advice yeah mm. and you just end up it ends up boosting you a little bit yeah. you feel like you could your day could go along much better or you feel like you're better equipped to handle the day yeah and especially as an entrepreneur so recently like i found that especially okay so there's the spiritual teachings ones or there's the wellness teaching ones but then there's also like the business development ones yeah so i started seeing myself actually it's like i enter a boardroom meeting i know i have my goals for the day sometimes for the week and i'm like okay cool let me listen to this particular um i don't know what to call it teaching yeah while i actually action or mm -hmm. while i checklist all that i'm doing mm -hmm. so of course i pick out something that Sometimes I think is relevant, but it actually shocks me at how it sort of like opens up different ways of how I think or how I approach By an interaction. Yeah, things, some, yeah. Some t yeah, and sometimes, honestly, yeah, and like you're saying, like as in, sometimes I know I have an important, say, meeting um, um, and I need to get myself in a certain headspace. Mm -hmm. So I just sort of take or consume such content and what that does to me is it elevates my perspective to see grander mm -hmm. to always okay cool even figure out how to sometimes i won't even lie like i extract copy paste like okay this is something that i've just learned in the past hour and i guess that's what mm -hmm. life is meant to be this yeah. is something i've just learned in the past hour Learn and, and, then, and i apply it immediately in the following hour you know and i i that's something I, I'm sure I do every single day. You know? So I have another question. Can you tell me of a time when you 
really did not do any self-care stuff for yourself. You just kind of like went through life uh, day to day without really being intentional as much when it came to yourself, your body, etc. Mm. And how was that time? What were you doing? You know, what was the reason I why you were like that? What? What? Ex but first of all, just paint a picture of how that was like. How that was like. I think hmm, I can't pinpoint when I didn't have at least one activity of on self care. Not well, but like without not enough, without knowing. Yeah, without I'd say and, I, and actually so I just like want to expound on that without knowing that it's actually self care. So say for example, I started working out super young. I said, okay, not super young, but like I started consistently working out um right after high school and I've been at it since, you know? Mm. So I've always had like say a workout Yes, but that's not but, because I'm asking. But, but... I yes, know, I'm every, at every point in your life, I'm somebody answering. does have I'm an activity. Answering, yeah. I, uh -huh. But, over time, you stop losing the focus of it being a self-care thing. It becomes like a, just a normal part yeah, of your life. Know, so, yeah. in that space, then, that was really the only thing for a huge part of my life that I did. Um, I didn't start intentionally reading books until I was maybe 23 um, so there's a huge chunk and after 23 maybe I read for mm, three years and then or two years and then stopped yes. reading you're giving me all the cushy cushy ones I want really like at a, there must have been a time where there was an important self-care thing that you needed to do but you were not doing and it had consequences that you mm. could see. So I just wanna, I wanna actually see that progression from who you are now, who you spend. Can I be honest? Can mm. I be honest? Um, I grew up, and now that we have a son, it's so interesting seeing this, but like, I was, I had like mild asthma growing up. And one of the things that, or two things that greatly affected me, of course, is like things like cut far. I don't know what they call it. They call it cut it's cut fire yeah. and dust or like smoke mm. so for the longest time in my 20s unfortunately i smoked mm. um a and lot a lot and the thing that that did was every like i was almost always coughing um yeah, I was almost always coughing. Every other week, I guess, I had like a running nose or mm. sniffly. And that's because, okay, so, yeah, already already guys say when you smoke, like, it's not good for your health. At all, yeah. At all, you mm. know. But then add, that's for people who actually have okay uh, respiratory Lungs. health. Yeah. Now, if you add somebody who doesn't have... Who already strong, has an issue. Yeah, so... I did that for the longest time and mm -hmm. looking back I'm like damn that's like the most self sabotage <laughs> self sabotage <laughs> activity. activity that I've done in my life mm -hmm. uh, I'm glad I got to sort of like just overcome that mm -hmm. but like that's the most self self, uh, self sabotage activity mm -hmm. and you know in your 20s as well as a bachelor well let me not say you know, assuming that you know, but like as a bachelor, most times in Nairobi at least, um, um, you're not eating as healthy. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you're probably on a kibanda diet. <clears throat> or oh, worse, noodles and egg diet. Or, yeah, or noodles which and egg diet. Which is something that you also like, eat. Yeah, and that's on good days. Sometimes it's bread and egg diet, you know? Mm. So um, for the longest, now in that duration, I'm already like devaluing my health, my mm. respiratory health, and at the same time, I'm also not taking care of my body in terms of nutrition, what I'm consuming mm. in general. So I feel like that's that's the time frame that I can look back at where I didn't, I wasn't as intentional in my in my self. Um, care mm -hmm. and ripple effect honestly was stupendous because like that's the same time I had my um, um, I wasn't as strong mentally mm -hmm. um, that's the same time you know I just wasn't 
when you yeah i wasn't strong health wise i wasn't mm. strong mentally so it meant i wasn't strong spiritually as well because yeah. if your body like yeah i see that yeah i definitely <laughs> you know? see the relation there yeah yeah okay thank you so much for that you're doing such a great job as a student of mine today i must say um are you on youtube no i'm not on youtube i'm still on I'm the also. self-care no i'm on a website uh, no, I'm, I'm reading my notes, my own notes. <laughs> you already said the name yeah. of the website earlier on. So I am on this, I'm the teacher, I am on <laughs> this, uh, I'm just going to read everything as it has been written. This teaching thing, I didn't go to school for this, so I, I mean, I'm just, I'm just winging it. It's okay. So you for me, you like, teach. you know, self-care is something that I find comes naturally to other people and not so naturally to others. Um, uh -huh. And it really depends on how, uh -huh. what? Audio hasn't been recording? I wonder. Oh, it has. <sighs> Guys. Self-shooting. Shooting things by nice yourself. <laughs> hey, sometimes your heart is in, in your throat because you're hoping that you're doing everything right. Nice, no, because... Like is the camera recording? Is the sound... It blinks red. Like it's, Why is it like the screen is... Today? Do you want to stop it and listen to see? I know it is recording. Okay, so we are good and you're sure about this. Yeah, the clap was just red. Sour, sour, then let's continue. So I was talking about how self-care comes really naturally to other people and not so naturally to others. Mm -hmm. Really based on how you grew up or the environment that you are in. Um, some people grew up with moms that spent a lot of time on themselves or dads who spent a lot of time on themselves and mm -hmm. they grew up seeing that and so they just naturally do it some other people grew up around people who don't do that for themselves the people who won't sit down and like um take care of the physical body or won't sit down and and try to figure out what nutrients they need on the daily so they could they could reach those those nutrient targets or people who just generally don't think about how they function and how to enhance the quality of life so if you live like that, then it's a new, um, it's a new thing that you have to start to learn to practice. Basically, you have mm -hmm. to teach yourself to practice constant self care, um, and I feel like even with this. Can I argue though? Like actually, okay, so you sort of, I'd say maybe unlearn at some point, but you're born naturally with it. Because say for example, if you're hungry, you cry. That's not self-care. Self-care is in t it has to be an intentional, very conscious activity. Not something that comes really naturally to you biologically. For instance, mm -hmm. if I'm hungry, then I'm grumpy, I'm tired, and I realize I have to eat so I go feed myself. No, it means... I believe that that's part of self-care, obviously, feeding yourself. But I really want us to look at self-care um, not from the ground, not from the basement, but from really what's a good place that self-care should be so that it can really enhance your life. Mm -hmm. So, forget about those biological things. It's what extra thing do you do for yourself? You know, like when you sit down and you watch a mental health video, how to um, how to kind of like be in the best mental state every day and then you start actioning that every day. Mm -hmm. That's self-care, you know? If you realize that um, your confidence gets boosted by you looking nice every day, then, you know, you put in some effort in how you look could even just be from the clothes you already have or you could buy more if you got the money and you've reached financial independence whatever but it's it has to be that conscious effort that i feel should be outside of what already comes naturally to you mm. so for me i look at self-care like this new this other thing plus that you add on top of what you do every day so yes so i kind of feel like it's for me personally my story with self-care is it took a while for me to actually get into self-care as much. Mm. I'm a woman, but I really was also a tomboy at one point of my life. And looking back, now in hindsight, because I'm grown, looking back at my tomboy phase, it wasn't really like a phase that I wanted. Can you imagine me in my tomboy phase? Would you, would you like to me? <laughs> I was actually yeah. imagining... Okay, so this is really unfortunate. But the thing I got from there, yes, tomboy, but I'm like... Why is the name Tom used on everything? <laughs> like, I was just Tom. like, I was like, Tom boy, I have no idea. <laughs> Why? Like, Tom is really one of those names that has been used and abused and everything in between. Like the other day I was like speaking with some friends of mine and 
even when they're referencing common names, they use the name Tom, Tom. to reference like the <laughs> saying for that such a regular Joe. Okay, regular Joe, but like that's such a regular Joe thing. Joe too. Joe regular. suffers the same fate yeah, as Tom. Like Tom the Canary. Yeah. Peeping Tom. Um, what's Tom the, and Jerry. Like what if you just what if you just say it right now? Peeping Tom. No, no, no. The one which you said in your Tomboy. Tomboy. Then I'm like, okay. Sorry, anyway. Tom. <laughs> that's why so, I think that's why I'm intentionally, and I guess that's like a self. Of course, okay. I'm not. I, I can't and un, undo the name Tom. But yeah. intentionally, I started referring. I said, like, okay, cool. I'm Olamo, and I gave the meaning Olamo life. And just you kind of let a, go of the Tom. I kind of let go of the Tom. Just as a self self care thing, really, if I'm being self-love honest. Self love thing. Self love, sure. yeah. I hear you. So, where was I? Uh, yeah, you about, about you students. being a tomboy. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, so it's such a tomboy. Now, looking back, I realized that I was a tomboy because I was struggling with my womanhood, my femininity, so you can mm-hmm. say. And because I didn't I didn't really grow up seeing a lot of the women in my life do a lot of self-care. They did, however, do you know you do your nails, you do your you have some lipstick, but people used to just look nice only on Sundays when people are going to church. Already. Or if they have to run errands or have to do something, but I didn't really grow up seeing people um, do it for themselves. Mm. Because I feel like if you want to look nice when you leave the house or because you're going to church or because you're going for an event, that's great, actually, still wonderful. But however, I feel like it's it's a little uh, outward, it's external. You're kind of doing it because of the external world. Mm. But if you can actually wake up in the morning, make yourself look good even in the way that you feel, even if you're not leaving the house, that's another level of self-care. It is the, that's I just care about how I see myself. You, you know? It just reminded me of, um, I guess now because of reference of like seeing, of course now my thought processes was, okay, trying to look back and see if my folks uh, did like self-care stuff. I remember the one time my dad started working out wow. and I think it was the funniest <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. I think it was the funniest thing I'd ever seen because, you know, I, I think at this point I'm already maybe a teenager and I've not, the most I've seen of him is pictures of when, I guess, even before he got my brother. So pictures of a younger him playing football. That's the most physical... That you saw your dad yeah, until now the gym, or, until now the workout thing. Or, or when he used to run to church because he's getting lit and it wasn't even really running no 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 and he had to because he always had a pen Bible? here what? Yeah. he always had like a pen on oh. his pocket so it was just like running like this or the pen doesn't fall <laughs> this is weird. but yeah so he started doing like i'd what say like a form of calisthenics mm-hmm. at home and it's basically things that i honestly i do now as well i guess a lot more intense because i guess i'm a bit younger than he was at that time or maybe much younger than he was at that time but still like looking back i'm like so that old man was just giving himself self love and you guys Everyone were looking at laughing. Him and laughing and like giggling <laughs> i'm sure because we're stretching you know he'd do like the whole like okay go. i'm like why is what is this guy doing <laughs> <laughs> you know, I get it. I don't know why it's um, those things should actually be so common that they're natural yeah. to us, but I feel like our parents also grew up with a very different lifestyle from ours and from Gen Z's in general. And for them, they were constantly busy yeah, and boomers, thinking about yeah. kids and they weren't spending as much time for self care. Like, I used to see my mom do the necessary to get where she needs to get, but she wouldn't go extra, you know, yeah. she would, you know, you do your hair, you do your nails, you, you buy a different outfit a couple of times, but, you know, I wasn't seeing her going for massages, I wasn't seeing her like, you know, scrubbing her face, like I wasn't seeing the other extra love stuff, I think they, but they, I think they did well with what they had. And how exposed they were because exposed our time we are true because we're also like very exposed. We are very exposed to so much content. Yeah, so that's probably true. for them, self care was sitting outside with a friend, meeting up with a friend, which is still self care. Actually, we're gonna talk about that. How social mm-hmm. interactions are a form of self care. You know, like when my folks visit, because um, they live up country, 
Um, so when whenever they visit, I almost always give them self care routines. <laughs> I'm like okay cool so today we are gonna meditate you're always giving them speeches <laughs> yeah today we're gonna meditate what is, what is meditating yeah just focus on your breathing then i put like some you know frequency sounds <laughs> you know like just for a you lot to... of people find that odd you'd be surprised yeah and sometimes i even do like aromatherapy i do like aromatherapy put frequency sounds and just like okay mom or dad uh, focus on breathing in and out whenever you're breathing in let all the good energy come to you whenever you're breathing out all the tension that you're feeling like the first time they were like what what is this new thing the kids are doing nowadays what is yeah i was thinking to see my mom be so surprised if i told her to meditate or if i let her yeah until, until i think i should be open but yeah you, until now that's the only thing my mom thinks about when she's coming. She's like, "Are you gonna? Are we gonna do that thing? Are you? Would you?" And she, couple, yeah, she couples it with, mm-hmm. "Are you gonna massage my?" Nini? Oh yeah, and yeah, then she loves then, massages. And then, "Are you gonna?" Um, you know, like as in, it's so fascinating that I feel like yeah, if 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 they're exposed to a lot more of that earlier on, yeah, you know, maybe they definitely would have taken care of themselves mm-hmm. also a, a little bit more. Yeah, so, stretching, but I haven't stretched with them for a while. For a while. Well, they're coming soon. Yeah. And they're going to come on this podcast as well. So hopefully we'll stretch in one of the episodes. Oh, I think But that yes. Cool. <laughs> so, so yeah, so, so self-care definitely, um, you kind of have to go to the root. Um, I guess people have different levels of self-care. For some people, it's a lot more extreme. I guess it depends on, you know what you can afford basically you know some people mm-hmm. don't have as much time available to themselves as other people if you have more time available to yourself there's a huge chance that you'll spend more time in self care like right now we're seeing gen z's do the most when it comes to self care like, i feel like right now gyms are full of gen z's mm. i mean is it because we're growing older but no but i really genuinely <laughs> do feel that that the jeans are filled with Gen Z's. Um, a lot of the content that you see that Gen Z's are uploading, etc., are like of self care. I remember the first time I watched a video a couple of years back. The first Gen Z video I watched was this young 14 year old back then talking about how she doesn't believe she has to work so hard through life. She doesn't have to get a, an 8 to 5 and work hard. She doesn't actually believe in the working hard. Of, she doesn't believe in the stressing yourself to feed the overall capitalistic space that we're in. And she would rather, even if it means she's broke, she would rather stay in a state of relaxation and just doing enough, very little here and there for survival. But she's comfortable in the, day, the quality of the day-to-day life. She's not grinding constantly. And I remember thinking to myself, what? Like, some people are like that. They're just like... I'm not gonna work so hard. I'm just gonna. But why should know, I have to? Why should I have to chase? But you know, like in truth, like I'll be a hundred. I know people say work hard. That's the thing that's gonna. But like, it has to be coupled with what are you working on? Because I know so many people who are working hard, and it's not that I know them personally, but I see so many people who work hard. I see so many people who wake up at. I not even wake up at 5 a.m. But I would be out yeah. at 5 a.m. You know, walking to the factories and they're going to be there until 6 p.m., 5 p.m., 6 yeah. p.m. And they walk back, they are really working hard. But, you know, like, it doesn't necessarily You know, a lot of them are working that hard also because they... Okay, first of all, the situations they're in, economic situations... But also maybe that's also all they've seen. They don't, um, there are people who believe in, I have to really work hard. And you will see that attitude with a lot of like our parents and millennials as well. Um, there's a lot of, I have to like grind, 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 and do, do, do in order to be successful. But now you're starting to see a whole new fresh perspective where guys are like, it's not just about grinding with your head down. But there's a lot of other strategies that have to go into. You have to pay it with a lot more things. You know, it's not just, 
Yeah, it has yeah. to be strategic. It's not just yeah hard work. So anyway, I don't know about your parents. Let us know if your parents um, showed a lot of self-care for themselves while you were growing up and how that has impacted you. For me, I didn't... Why are you smiling like that? No, I was just... I remember my dad again. <laughs> what else did your dad do? Self-care? <laughs> um, I think he read a lot. Mm. But he didn't... Come to think of it, I don't think he read self-care stuff. I think he read a lot of newspapers. Your dad has always been a sucker for news and entertainment. Mm. So, anyway. So, but, um, yeah. I, so, I guess um, we'll ask him when he comes. We'll ask him when he comes. What he's, at least he used to comb his hair every morning. He looked really neat. Oh, I know the self-care thing that my dad did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is so weird. But... Okay, so we lived, when growing up, we didn't like live in like a, a big house or anything. It was, you know, a shared flat. Um, and because my dad was, I guess, the first one in his family from the village to come to the city. To the city. So it meant city that, boys. yeah, it meant that every relative, like that was the HQ. Whenever they, they <laughs> that, that was the HQ. They so would like, come to your house and, and yeah, stay at your you house. know, and I and all the cousins who studied in universities in Nairobi have and passed through your house. That's where they lived, basically. <laughs> they lived. Yeah, you know, and like <laughs> again, wasn't such a big space. Like literally, it was not. <laughs> you know. So your house is always full. Like how was many people? Always in full. A... Always full. I think the least I can remember is. Mm, Five, six. Yeah, that's a lot of people. Yes. For a two-bedroom house. And mm. the bedroom is as big as... Man, I don't even know. Like, literally, from where the camera is to here, maybe a bit That is newer. like two meters, two and a, maybe three meters. Maybe. Maybe, if I'm... Yeah, like it only... Like, literally, like you had to squeeze yourself to pass through the... Like from you enter the door, you have to like you can't walk in like in. straight like mm. like you enter and then you have to like walk on your side to actually get into the and so um but I remember like the thing was if we're planning to go out or like and not anywhere really if you're planning to leave the house and you need to shower and prep you had to enter the bathroom before my dad. There was only one shared bathroom. Mm -hmm. So you had to enter the bathroom before my dad got in. Because it was like his territory. Like he'd enter there and stay for (laughs) long. (laughs) Like 45 minutes later. Like I remember like there's an uncle of mine who used to come to the house like um He's going to shower. Uh, <laughs> I've missed him. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, let me just go back. Let, let me just go, go for a bit. I'll come back. I'll come back. Like that's how long my dad. Yeah, I think. Yeah. I think that's I, a self. I enjoy thing. showers as well. I definitely love just the act of showering, which I'm sure you enjoy. But as I well. do too. Yeah. And also for me, like I enjoy also the others. You know, the scrubbing, the moisturizing, the the flossing, the you know, the self cleaning. Yeah. Process is yeah, but nice. yeah, if it, I, now I understand because, like, honestly, like I have amazing ideas in the shower. Yeah. And they also solve a lot of problems. In the, it's like it's just a, f- a state of flow. Yeah. You know. And also in a very full house, probably that was kind of felt like a safe space for him. Mm, so. Fair enough. Yes. So, what are some of the things that one can do for self care? Assuming that right now you don't do anything for self care, or you do maybe one or two things. I'm just going to list a couple of things that can strike ideas for stuff that what can do for self-care. Mm. And um, these are like things above, I'm cutting my nails today, or I'm combing my beard today, or mm. something. Mm. These are things that you, you can do outside of that. Um, outside one of is, grooming. Yes. Outside of this. Like one is going out in nature. Right? Taking a walk. In nature allowing yourself to like be in the space of nature and just feel the birds the the etc just great views so maybe taking a drive or taking a walk depending on your capability and then allowing yourself to interact with nature the reason why this is very important in self-care is because 
we are nature we are part of nature it's so natural to us but over time obviously as human beings we've come up with so many different innovations and, and now we spend a lot of time indoors we spend a lot of time exposed to what is not natural light through our bulbs the lights while you're filming or even in an office or in a bank whatever you work from you're exposed to lights that are not even that you're not in your natural habitat Do you know this so, past weekend mm -hmm. i left the house only when I was coming to open the gate for you. Oh my. Wow. Oh, yeah, you see, it's it, crazy. it happens really easily. Without knowing Yeah, that. without one knowing. You can just find that your life, you don't interact with nature, but interacting with nature is so healing for your body. It's so healing for your mind. Mm -hmm. And it's so calming and can even reduce stress. That's one thing. Do you want to say something else that we're bouncing it off of each other? As a student, I'm here to learn. That's the kind of student <laughs> I like. <laughs> I might do a good but job. You know, but you know, like, actually, like, another self-care thing that I do, I've picked up, and this is a farming thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like, I feel like I really enjoy being in the farm. And I'm even giving it, like, symbolic meaning. Whenever, say, for example, these seedlings that have just shot up, like, okay, cool. This is the new opportunities. New opportunities. Um, whenever I'm like, okay, uh, weeding or just because uh, it's a it's a kitchen farm, so it's not it's not yeah, necessarily it's like it's not a commercial farm or anything. So I enjoy actually being attentive on it. And that actually lines with being in nature. You know? mm. it probably feels great for your body and for your well being in general. Mm, well, uh, yeah, but anyway, yeah. yeah. The other thing <laughs> is taking breaks from social media. Um, and taking breaks from screens, etc. Mm. Um, again, I think I said this in a previous episode, but the way that our minds were programmed to function, they were not meant to take up this huge load of information that we give it every single day by reading thousands of websites and scrolling through thousands of posts, you know? Why are you making that face? Nothing. Why are you making that face though? No, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> but yes, we need to give our mind that mental break. Yeah. If you're watching a series, you're binge watching a series, like, you have to give yourself a break. Um, and also that allows you to even tap into yourself and what you have to say as opposed to all of the voices in your mind. Mm -hmm. Another thing, let me go back into my notes. Another thing that one can do, ooh, journaling. Do you know journaling is a very powerful thing that most people don't do? Mm. But it really allows you to, to, first of all, know yourself. Allows you to know how your life is progressing. Because we usually have this assumption that we have such great memories. <laughs> have you ever owned a diary? Yeah. When you own a diary, when you read back at an entry you made like a year or a year and a half ago, usually you get baffled. You're like, wow, this is what was happening to what I was thinking about. But usually people don't like to journal because they're like, I know what's happening in my life already. Like, I know what happened last year. I know how I was feeling in 2007. But you don't but, have the specifics. Yeah, and sometimes seeing the specifics allows you to meet yourself, to, to see what you to can see do the better, allows to see the growth. Allows you to see, see yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's true. So, <laughs> no, I've just seen a very interesting one up. <laughs> Fly a kite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, once you read these websites that are obviously written by white people, they can maybe that's not the right thing to say. Yeah, no, sorry guys. Um, <clears throat> oh, a graduation pra a graduation practice, a gratitude practice. Gratitude is one of the I think so mind blowing how gratitude Yo, can change your perspective. That's true. Things. That's true. Actually, okay. So, yeah, personal experience. Like, yeah. got a job that I wasn't happy about because it was an out-and-out -out demotion, mm. right? And I remember feeling, and I guess I'm entitled to feel that, but I remember feeling, yeah, and it's just some, some, yeah. it felt off, right? But then I realized, no, actually, this doesn't make sense. It's okay. You can continue. 
But you can just say it's like whatever the story wants the moment, whatever. Even if it's not on gratitude, it's fine. No, no, no. Then I just I felt like it's easy for me to succumb in that feeling of not of mm, I'm not doing the job that I want to actually do or I've been demoted and felt mm. bad about it. It's easy for then the ego to be like, yes, something to cling on to. So you can actually make this guy depressed. He's been happy for so long, you know? And yeah. I almost actually like fell into that trap and momentarily was like, okay, cool. You know what? In truth, it may not be the job that I want to do. If anything, it's a demotion. So I'm not really happy about that fact. But the thing that it did was it affected how... I know it's not I got demoted because of something that I did wrong. If anything, the previous outing on the same job was actually exceptionally done, you know. Mm. But it just made me realize, okay, cool, you know what? Maybe this is a wake-up call to actually focus on your own personal growth. Maybe this is a wake-up call to actually, you know, like, you could be of value sometimes people may not see that value and it's not because they don't want to see it but sometimes maybe it's the nudge that you need to remember or to be reminded that you could also offer that value at a grander scale if you sort of redirected it closer home you know so hmm. yeah i hear you yeah so um well yeah those are those are a deep place you took us. Mm -hmm. um, so for gratitude, I was going to say that people complain a lot. Mm. People complain so, so much about everything and anything. You know? Um, like sometimes, I mean, even if you went into a shop right now and then you, you get into a conversation with the cashier about nothing in particular, most people might say something, most people will will find a way to bring in a complaint somehow and say, hi, you know, the economy, wow, hey, 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 fuel is high, wow, hey, 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 but you know this country, ah, we can't anymore, hey, the president, you just never know, wow, you know we're in war, uh, it's like a lot of like all of these negative things and we, we hear negative things so often that we're so used to it that it's normal. Mm -hmm. You meet somebody and you're like, ah, yeah, let's just brood over all the things that aren't going right in our life. It's, it's very few times do you find people reaching, people hanging out together and only discussing fun stuff and stuff that they're actually happy yeah. about and positive for like a good straight one hour to, or the entire without, or the entire conversation, you know? And, mm -hmm. and of course, this is not to say that people should not complain. People do need that vulnerable space to complain. This is a little point, I'll link it to that. But it's just interesting to see that most conversations are going to lean in towards negative or shock value or sens sen sensationalism as opposed to this goodness and joy and i'll be honest but i think it's tied to the content that majority of people consume um, yeah majority a majority a yeah. majority of even okay so we're in kenya right now um and i guess i'll even confidently speak on behalf of not even africa but the world mm -hmm. but like a majority of people don't have the luxury of choosing the content that they consume. If you're being a hundred percent honest, you know what I mean? Even the, even what people consider first class or first world countries, not everyone has the luxury of choosing the content they consume. Most times they actually, oh, this is what is in the newspaper. This is what is in the programming of the TV, right? Yeah. And you know, you, you know, also up to date. Even us, like. We just try to be intentional with what we watch, but most of the time we're being bombarded by even stuff with that we shouldn't like, even be watching and maybe stuff <laughs> that we don't even need. Even to with know. the internet, yeah, like algorithms. There's are algorithms. Sometimes, coming, yeah, but... you you just see a negative thing you didn't need to know that day. I guess that's why they say don't wake up in the morning and and look at social media. But yeah, I mean. Back to the point. It's take breaks. Was it was the point of taking breaks from social media? Yeah, yeah, you really say that, yeah. yeah. I think it was the whole... You're talking about how people have negative... Absolutely, yeah. gratitude was the point. Hmm. So gratitude was the point, yeah. Um, that we are bombarded by a lot of negative news, negative 
people a lot of complaining but sometimes um, it's important to live a life of gratitude and there's a place I read that living a life of gratitude isn't taking five minutes out of your day to say oh I'm so grateful for this 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 and that it's actually continually living in gratitude such that you're constantly feeling a feeling of gratitude. It's not right now I'm gonna say, I'm so happy to have you here, I'm so happy to have a camera, no. But actually I feel the, the, the privilege that I have to have you, to have the camera, to, have, to be able to speak, to be able to eat, lunch, and you're, you, it's, so it's a feeling you're carrying within yourself. So living a gratitude life is actually very different from saying, I am grateful today for this, this, and listing five things and then going to sleep. I think I could tie that with actually mindset, yeah. Mindset. I could, I could tie it with just like a mindset shift and um, basically what a positive mindset shift can do to you. You know, like, in truth, okay, I don't know if this is a hundred percent what is in the world, but a Newton... Newton's third law of motion for every action is an equal but opposite reaction. So it means like in truth, like in life, there's always two ways to see things. You could either, no matter what you're seeing, like literally anything, anything you know, so you could either choose to see the positive in it or you could choose to see the negative. I'm not saying don't have negative experiences, but like if you choose to see if you choose to find a positive reaction, I guess, to, to negative a negative experience. experience, then you sort of like outweigh the negativeness or the negativity. I mean, I know sometimes yeah. in these occasions where that's absolutely difficult, say if there's loss or if there's, um, especially like if there's loss of life or anything, I know that may actually be difficult at that moment, but like, the only way to really overcome is actually choosing to have a positive outlook yeah. in whatever uh, action. S speaking of that, I have a story. A friend of mine called Diane. Um, her and I were talking on my podcast, <laughs> which is about to be launched. <laughs> but um, her and I were talking about what we share is the loss of our fathers. So we lost our fathers at a, at a young age. And we were just talking really openly about it and we were like do you know what if my father didn't die i probably would be so spoiled and i'd be so different from what i am today i'd be so spoiled or i would be so different or i would have wouldn't be as um as grown or as responsible i wouldn't mm -hmm. be a responsible adult basically mm -hmm. and you know i felt this exact same way i told her i feel like if my dad didn't die I would also have i wouldn't be a responsible adult today mm -hmm. i feel like his death also brought such um, positive things, humongous positive things that sometimes people don't look at, you know? It really forced me to really reach into myself, my mm. abilities, things that I could do. I had to understand how to handle my own emotions because you start to realize that people can't always be there for you, so you, you, you find a way to cope, and in, the, and in finding a way to cope, you find other avenues of healing, and you put yourself out there. It really took me away from being as a spoiled kid, daddy's girl who just needs things to, to function nicely everywhere, you know, always giving me like kidogo kido money on the side to, whoa, this is life. It doesn't feel great, but if you push through it, you actually you end up being a much be better human being oh, from that. Powerful. So, so how and they were literally laughing over this because I'm like, oh my God, I finally found somebody who could see a positive outcome from something that people deem so negative. negative. Yeah. Anyway, there are so many other things that you guys could do, obviously. You could go on a hike, you could meet up with your friend, you could... Um, make art. You could make art. Um, basically, you could do a lot of things that just make you happy. You could dance. Um, what else? Uh, let me read. Plant a garden. You have a garden. You could bird watch. You love to bird watch. Um, you could hug someone you care about. You could call somebody and tell them nice, great stuff, you know, I love you. You're you can also look at yourself in the mirror and tell and yourself. And tell yourself that, how yeah. amazing and awesome you are because you yeah. are. <laughs> um, so it's a bunch of different things. You can make a scrapbook. You can, you can set a podcast. You can take a shower and, and fill yourself with 
really good thoughts so self-care is really self-care habits are really what you make them of course they're tailor-made to who you are and what you find to be interesting and fun mm. what i do is that i love my evenings from around 8 p.m i don't want to be bothered i don't want to i don't want to watch anything i just want to have some time to myself wind down you know apply some lotion slowly of like spending time i don't have to feel like a brush or i'm rushing towards something and i feel mm. like um this whole self-care thing has almost been so marketed to women or is expected for women to participate in more than men, which I don't understand why. I think men, if anything, you guys need like so much self-care, you know? I think actually, I guess at least thanks to the internet, but I feel like that narrative is changing. changing. Just seeing a lot of men speaking... Okay, so yeah, most times you think self-care, you think vulnerability. But yeah, there's a lot of men who are more vulnerable now thanks to the internet. Um, but then there's also like a lot more, you know, it's, it's not, I mean, sports is also a good self-care routine, you know, like the gym is also mm -hmm. a good self-care routine, you know. Um, to all the men who love to cook, cooking is also a good self-care oh routine. Goodness. So cooking it's not necessarily, so yeah. it's not necessarily just, it's not, it's, it's not necessarily just a, w a women thing. Um, if anything, like, there's this verse that I almost feel like I misunderstood my entire life, but the whole love your neighbors, you love yourself. Mm. You know, like, there's two ways that I started looking at it as is basically, I can't give you love. If you don't give yourself If I don't give myself love. Actually, this is an actual story. Like, I met her when I was so okay and at peace with being by myself. You know, and I was at, like, I hadn't been at that much peace in a while. You know, of course, I'm still practicing that peace state. But like, you know, you always ah, you know, you have to have you have to have a partner. You have to have. It won't work if you don't love yourself. It won't. There's no marriage. There's no partnership. There's no. If it doesn't start from you, mm -hmm. it will not work. Yeah. Like, you have to be able to actually give yourself that love for it to emanate. And even if you're not giving it to somebody else, the thing that could happen is that other person or those other people or even those other companies will see how much self-love you're giving to you that they will be inspired they'll, they'll want to they'll aspire to be like they're like mm. i love how Lama actually carries himself nowadays i wonder what he does i mean then they come and like okay cool so I watched the podcast i'm like okay so this is the thing he does okay cool maybe i could practice some of this you know mm. And even if I don't, because in truth, like, say for example, this page already has like 14,000 subscribers, mm. right? So this, it'll take me so long to actually be able to interact individually with all the subscribers. But there's people who watch these videos and see that, okay, these two people, that's Jangara and Olanga actually, like, they have so much self-care, I aspire to be like... You know, and they had to start from us giving ourselves. So, love your neighbors, you love yourself. Like, you can't be able to spread love if you are not love. Yeah, so guys, that's basically self care. You know, self care is really all about you so that you could be a much better human being for yourself and for other people and to other people, I guess. So, guys, when it comes to self care, I just believe that you should, um, you know, first of all, just. Spend some time with yourself, get to know yourself. What do you like? What do you want? What mm -hmm. do you consider taking care of yourself, you know? Obviously, make it a healthy habit. It needs to be something that is healthy for you. So, um, yeah. And then do it. Do it every single day, no matter what. Push yourself to have your space. Whether it's a space to vent that you go to, do that. Whether it's a space to um, stay in gratitude, do that. Whether it's a walk to stay in nature, do that. Whether it's meditation or prayer, do that. Do whatever it takes to put you in that space where you take care of yourself. Mm. And also know, guys, people who take care of themselves, it shows. 
That's it true. actually usually shows that you will know that somebody takes care of themselves. They do. Um, Is this there's a lot of self-respect that and self-confidence that someone who takes care of themselves works with, I believe. Because the more you take care of yourself, the more you nurture yourself. Mm. Obviously, you're becoming more confident, you're becoming a valuable member of society. You trust yourself more. You trust more. yourself more. You are doing the things that you love and you are just, you're just glowing and shining on this earth, you know. So I really think it's important to do that. And um, you'll notice that a lot of times when you meet somebody who, even basic hygiene, for instance, like maybe that's not um, even that's a priority right, yeah. for them, you will see how people will treat those people. And I think we have to be practical about life. We need other people. We need collaborations. We need partnerships. Mm. We are social beings. We need other people. That's so it's, right. it's important to also be somebody who is going to be around. And yeah, um, so self-care, guys. Muhimu. So guys, um, you can share with us what your self-care habits are. Do you have something you want to say? You love me? Can't live without me. Loves everything about me. Da, 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 da. I think one of the things I can say about self care. You said something about learn about who you are or learn yourself. Yes, we are social beings. Um, one of the I feel. For you to be able to interact properly, you have to also be at peace with being with yourself or by yourself. Um, and because just there's a lot of things that you learn about yourself or that you will learn that people might like or might not like about yourself and it could also probably influence how you interact with people and it's not interacting with people from a place of wanting to please people yeah, no. but really the moment you understand yourself for example I used to have a temper you did I had a crazy short temper, you know? Really? And that's basically what that meant as as I grew, I'm like, okay, cool. Because that's something that, for example, maybe a couple of people have highlighted. I'm like, okay, I need not rub off negatively. And not even for other people's sake, but, you know, it rallies you. It makes you feel sad makes you feel mm. I'm like okay for myself first okay it's not a feeling that i like because i'll awkwardly now just be there like people yeah people <laughs> reacted you know you know so yeah. so but like I, I had to like find pieces okay cool so how do i know when i'm being rallied how do i know when the emotions are actually starting to carry me over in place of me being able to handle them Okay, so then that's the that's the how I know that that's happening. So now, how do I react to that happening? You know, um, does it mean I just keep quiet for a bit longer, <laughs> or does it mean that I do that mm, um, breathing exercise, breathing exercise that I talked about before responding, or does it mean that you know I figure out a certain way to sort of like control my emotion? And what I realized is, again, okay, cool, it'll definitely ripple effect will make the interaction with the other person. Even if you're not in agreement, even if you know that you are right, you know, but like it makes the interaction easier and smoother for you with that other person. And then also, you're not, you don't let your ego or whatever come in between, you know, and... I had to do that. I had to do that by being by myself. Nobody else can do that work for me, you know. So, I think one of the other things for self care is really you have to be open to introspection, 100%. because as the title says, self care. Like nobody else can be able to establish to what self care is, is. But you, yeah, you are the only one to define it to do it. It is. Yeah. So yeah, thank you for that. That was that was a wow. Look at my student. You've become so so great at this. I'm mm -hmm. happy that I have taught you well. I think that I, I'm receiving gifts now. Um, I'm receiving appreciation also. Um, thank you. You're very welcome. <laughs> you see, I had to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, 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 okay. Thank but you so thank much you for so watching much. the video. Bye. Subscribe. Watch
click the bell, like, yes. share. Yes, please. Yeah. All right, bye guys. Bye.